Inspired by geology and archaeology, ceramicist Anne Butler is pushing the boundaries with Parian porcelain sculptures and vessels. Parian has been widely used for centuries to make sculptures because of its likeness to white marble. But for this artist in Carrie Duff, working with it hasn't been without its difficulties. I have explored endlessly the qualities of this material and challenged it. A lot of these marks will be inspired by sort of urban environments or architecture. It can be used in very, very wafer-thin pieces or as a solid piece, which has this lovely satin-like quality of marble. It is incredibly tricky to work with. Mm -hmm. It is also incredibly mobile in the kiln and there can be a difference of three degrees between you having a piece that is standing in the shape that you put it in the kiln to collapsing. Wow, the nerves that you must have putting anything in there. <laughs> there have been many tearful disasters, but there have been lovely accidents that um, have happened. Okay, well, let's move this over the top. I feel like I could watch this all day. My stress levels seem to be dissipating. That's very meditative, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. This is how I'd make my bowls, but if I was to do any of these other pieces mm -hmm. and these cubes, I would use the same technique. Anne has only recently returned to the studio after many years spent travelling and bringing up her family. Nearly there. On coming back here to Northern Ireland, I had my son, but it did mean that for the interim, 12, 13 years, my focus was somewhere completely different. Um, and then I was encouraged by friends to come back into the studio. Okay, at this point it's starting to dry. I'm gonna have to speed up a bit. I had lost my confidence and felt that my previous work had happened to somebody else in a previous life, but getting back into the studio, I reignited that passion. You've genuinely picked one of the hardest materials in the world to work with, haven't you? I, I like a challenge. <laughs> in that, that aspect, but you've done that before. <laughs> in that aspect, this is very similar then to to a print technique where you're taking mm -hmm. taking the image off. Mm -hmm. All of my work, I like to construct and then deconstruct. So at this point, I abstract it by cutting some pieces out, and then I will work them into a mould. So we're patching, mm -hmm. patching this in and uh, layering it up. That'd be allowed to dry. And then here's and then one you made earlier. Anne's work is painstakingly delicate. And that is it with the It's gorgeous. Marks. The loss rate is very, very high, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's usually one in every six might survive. That's a massive hit rate, isn't it? Yeah. The sculptures are built up with layer upon layer of porcelain. This would then be transferred to the kiln and fired, and I would then slot these together. It doesn't matter to me that they break that part of it. If you're working on something and the wrong piece breaks, are you not a bit like, oh, not that bit? Each of these pieces warp. Mm -hmm. There's a certain amount of warpage in the kiln. So they're not precise, they're not made by a machine. Joining them together, there can be quite a lot of breakage as there is in that piece. Okay. Um, but I think it adds to the overall effect. It still has the integrity of its shape. With the telephone, mm -hmm. there was a huge amount of breakage, but that fallibility is very important. Despite being relatively new to the scene, one of Anne's first sculptures, Analog, was included in the Royal Ulster Academy's annual exhibition. I was particularly interested in investigating a grid-like structure that, that echoed the function of, of a telephone or that contrast between digital and analogue. Mm -hmm. And it was through that and through experimentation that this process evolved. 
I think initially when I came back into the studio, I just needed to answer the, the question in myself as to what ceramics meant to me. But after six months and immersing myself completely in the process, I was um, back on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> and she hasn't looked back since. Last year I was fortunate enough to win the Rosie James Award and there has been interest in my work from the South and in England and I have been fortunate enough to, to, to have been selected for the Korean Biennale this year. I uh, never tire of the endless possibilities and will continue just experimenting in the material.